Are you looking for a native tree that has high wildlife and pollinator value? Then one of the hackberries may be the tree for you. The hackberries are some of our most distinctive trees, and their persistent berries are an important winter food source for many species of songbirds, game birds, and small mammals. There are three species of hackberry native to eastern North America that have large native ranges and are commonly available from native plant nurseries. Let's dive into them so you can see which one fits your unique goals and planting site. First up is the common hackberry, Celtis occidentalis, which has a large range in eastern North America, but is more common in the upper two-thirds of the U.S., especially in the Midwest. It is a large tree and can be from 40 to 100 feet tall with a 40 to 60 foot spread. Soils make a huge difference with the mature height common hackberry can attain. And while it is not picky about soils, it will grow just about anywhere. It will become much larger when growing in rich bottomland soils. While it can handle partial shade, it will have better form and produce more fruit if grown in full sun. A cool characteristic of common hackberry are the corky, wart-like growths on its otherwise smooth gray bark. These growths are often more prominent on the lower trunk and may form corky ridges. The bark is very distinctive and an easy way to ID hackberry at any time of the year. Common hackberry has inconspicuous, wind-pollinated greenish flowers that bloom from April to May, depending on location, that will give way to green, round berries which mature to a deep purple in August to September. The berries persist into the winter, where they become an excellent food source for songbirds like cedar waxwings and eastern bluebirds, and game birds such as rough grouse. Small mammals will also feed on the berries. The berries are edible and somewhat sweet and can be eaten raw or used to make jellies. The catch is, there just isn't much to them. Most of the berry is taken up by a large pit. Not so great if you're looking for a snack, but the birds don't seem to mind. But producing berries that the birds love to eat is not the only way hackberries feed birds. Hackberries are known host plants for up to 43 species of caterpillars, and caterpillars are the fuel baby birds need to grow, as well as being a preferred food of insectivorous species like many of the warblers, reptiles, amphibians, and even some small mammals. Among the 43 species known to use hackberry as a host plant are some super cool butterflies, including the tawny emperor, the question mark, the morning cloak, which I did a video about that I will link in the description, the American snout, and the aptly named Hackberry Emperor. If you love learning about native trees that can produce food for birds nearly year round and host some super cool caterpillars, inch on over and take a chomp out of that like button. A tree that is often confused with a common hackberry is its close relative, the sugarberry, Celtis levigata which also has a large range that overlaps that of the common hackberry. Sugarberry is more common south of the Ohio River and in Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana. It is not as large as common hackberry, with sugarberry reaching 50 to 70 feet tall with a 30 to 60 foot spread. It prefers sand to clay loams and is quite adaptable when it comes to soils and can grow in partial shade, but does its best in full sun. The inconspicuous greenish flowers bloom in April to May, depending on location, and will form into green berries that will ripen to an orange-red color from August to October. The fruits may darken to a deep reddish purple as they persist on the tree in the winter when they become an important food source for songbirds, game birds, and small mammals. The sugarberry fruits are edible, and as the name suggests, they are much sweeter and juicier than the berries of the common hackberry. The bark is a smooth gray with corky, wart-like bumps that may form ridges in some instances and are usually more prominent on the lower trunk. So far, the species I have covered are large trees when mature. But what do you do if a hackberry fits your habitat goals? Or maybe you just love that funky warty bark, but you don't have the space for a 70-foot tall by 50-foot wide tree. Well, there's a couple of options. Option number one is to coppice the tree. This is simply the process of cutting the tree to the ground and letting it re-sprout from the stump. Hackberries respond quite well to this practice and will grow back with multiple stems and in a shrubbier growth form. Coppicing is a common practice in Europe and has been done in Great Britain for thousands of years, but it isn't used nearly as much as it maybe should be here in the U.S. This isn't a one and done cut, and a hackberry will have to be cut every now and then to keep it at a smaller size. Around every two to three years is the normal with the Celtis species, but it can vary depending on growing conditions. 
Fruit production may also be set back when the tree is coppiced, so be aware. Having more than one tree so that they can be coppiced in rotation is a good way to ensure there are always berries available in winter for your backyard birds. There are many tree species that respond well to coppicing, and if you'd like to see a video that goes into this practice in detail, let me know down in the comments. While coppicing is a viable option for maintaining a common hackberry or a sugarberry at a smaller size, there is another option for those of you who do not want to go through the work of coppicing a tree every few years. But before we get there, I would like to take a second to thank everybody who has supported the channel by subscribing. I really do appreciate it, and it does let me know that the content I am creating is reaching the audience it is meant for. I would also like to give a super huge thank you to all those who support the channel financially through our Patreon, PayPal Donate, and YouTube Super Thanks. The channel would not be possible without you, and we here at Backyard Ecology are truly thankful for you. If you would like to join them in their support of Backyard Ecology, our Patreon and PayPal Donate are linked in the description, and you can give through YouTube Super Thanks by clicking the heart with the dollar sign icon right below this video. Thanks again for the support. The second option for a smaller hackberry is to simply plant a dwarf hackberry, Celtis pumila. You may also see this shrub hackberry called Celtis tenuifolia, and the scientific name tends to flip between the two as the taxonomists try to sort out which is correct. As the common name suggests, dwarf hackberry is a large multi-trunk shrub or small tree and matures from 6 to 36 feet tall with an 8 to 15 foot spread. If that is still a little large for your space, dwarf hackberry can be coppiced like other hackberries and kept at a smaller size. In true hackberry fashion, it is not picky about soils and can grow in partial shade to full sun with better form and fruiting in full sun. Its native range is similar to sugarberries. The small greenish wind pollinated flowers bloom in April to May, depending on location, and will give way to berries that will ripen to an orange red in August to October and may darken to purple as they persist on the tree in the winter. Like other hackberry fruits, they are eaten by songbirds, game birds, and small mammals. Unlike common hackberry and sugarberry, the dwarf hackberry often has nearly smooth gray bark that is very similar to that of American beech. If it does have warty lenticels, there are far fewer than its tree form cousins have. While this is slightly unusual, it is not the strangest thing about the hackberries. Hackberry was until recently placed in the elm family. The hackberries and elms do share many similarities, leaf shape, growth form, and their wood characteristics. If you have ever split elm and hackberry for firewood, you know exactly what I mean. For a long time, looking at these similarities was the way plants were placed into families. DNA analysis has allowed a new perspective on things, and many plant families have changed greatly due to it. One of those changes is that the genus Celtis, the hackberries, has been moved from the elm family and placed into the family Cannabaceae. That may sound familiar to some of you because it is named for the genus Cannabis. Yes, the genus of the devil's lettuce. So a common native tree that is an excellent host plant and a food provider for wildlife is a cousin of the sticky icky and also of that essential beer ingredient, hops, which is also in the Cannabaceae. Yep, nature is super weird. The hackberries are awesome for pollinators and wildlife, especially birds, but they are just one piece of the puzzle. To maximize your backyard's ability to provide for the pollinators and critters that call your backyard home, you really need an integrated ecosystem approach that combines trees, shrubs, flowering plants, and other features. And you can learn all about how to do that in this video, and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.